Leafs claim home ice back with a game three victory. It was a wild one. We'll recap that and tee up for tonight's game four. You're listening to Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the April 24th edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother from TSN 1050's Overdrive and Leafs Lunch. Uh, I've got my co-host Dave Morissuti with me today from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Lockdown Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs entry podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcast from. We're also up on YouTube as well for the video audience. That's Locked On Leafs on YouTube. Hit subscribe. We've got new content each and every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, if you're an everydayer, thank you so much again for, for joining us. But if you're new, it's your first time, hopefully you enjoy the content and sub up. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. What? A game we were treated to Saturday night, Dave. Maple Leafs come from behind, win the game four to three in overtime. It was it was not a game that the Leafs typically win. They typically lose those games. What was different this time around, Dave? We had the factor, Ryan O'Reilly picking just just in that moment. I like I don't know if there was another Leaf that might have scored a goal in that time, like. Just having somebody that knew what to do in them on where to be and just how to get that goal to tie the game. And then with min- with with minutes left, well, under a minute left, like that face-off, crucial. Le- Leeds have been terrible at draws all game long. And for him to win that draw cleanly to Riley and then for him to score like that, like, yeah, that's a, that's a game that I think everyone was kind of preparing for the letdown throughout because they didn't play well. They weren't looking good. And it, it was just a nice change to see that, you know what, they didn't have their best game, but they found a way to get the win. Yeah, O'Reilly's one guy. Ilya Samsov deserves a lot of love, though, I think, oh, in, yeah. in this game. I mean, he was spectacular. Like, that team was garbage in the second period. Garbage. Terrible. Not that much better in the third, to be honest with you, until after all the shenanigans started to go down, which we will definitely get into, including GM Kyle Dubas getting into it with some fans down in Tampa. But I really do look back at uh, one specific turning point in that game, one that could have been curtains for the Leafs, and that was Nick Paul um, walking the puck out in front, nobody with him, and he tries to shoot glove side on Samsonov, and he makes the save. If he doesn't, that's 4-2, and very hard for the Leafs to come back. In the third period, down two goals against that team. He keeps it within reach keeps it to a 3-2 hockey game, and then O'Reilly able to come up big uh, and, and get this team into OT where Riley ends the thing with uh, with a long point shot that uh, sneaks through a bunch of bodies and, and gets in there. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I, I said going into, into the game on Friday, if, if the Maple Leafs were going to win game three and get home ice back, Stamsov was going to have to steal one. I, I I said on Leafs Lunch, I can't remember if I made that prediction on this show too. I believe I did. But if I didn't, I definitely said on Leafs Lunch. And it's exactly what happened. For me, Samsov was the first star. That guy was unfreaking believable And uh, he really has instilled some strong belief within Leafs Nation that they finally have a goalie that might be able to take him somewhere. Like, I, I, I can't remember a goaltender who's – had a statement win like that that's stolen a game in like 20 years since Belfort. Yeah, I mean you did you did say that, so I'm gonna give you credit for it. You did say it, and I was I I had it ready to go to give you credit for the Samson up prediction. So yeah, I know we haven't we haven't had that. The Leafs have not had that from like I don't even think Freddie Anderson ever had. Like he would have been the closest, but I don't think he ever even had a playoff performance like that. It's 
this is what you need in the playoffs. This is what the Tampa Bay Lightning have been getting from Andre Vasilevsky the last few years. Look at what the Boston Bruins are getting from Linus Allmark right now. Look at what just any of the top contenders, save for maybe the Colorado Avalanche, who won the cup with subpar goaltending. Other than that, every other team that's gone far or won the cup have done on the backs of a go- good goaltending performance. I mean, look, Carey Price pretty much ruined the rest of his career to get Montreal to that cup final yeah. uh, a few years ago. So that I that's something that I think the Le- that you know the Leafs should be very confident about, and you know <clears throat> whether that can continue. Like that's that's a lot to ask of Samsonov to do that consistently. Like the Leafs definitely need to be playing better in front of him. But to know that they could have an off night like that and he can step up like that after game one where he didn't look so great, I think that's a that's a big bolster of uh, the confidence of the team for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the other guy who actually played hero for the team in overtime, Morgan Riley, the last two games, like he's been so pivotal for this team. I mean, he really shows like when he is at his best, which he really hasn't been for most of this season. It's a good time for him to really start peaking, if you ask me. But when he's at his best, like he's showing, you know, how good he can be, how effective he can be, and how much of a game changer he really is um, when he is playing at a top level, which he seems to be playing right now. Gets the game winning goal, um, had what, four assists at the game before. Morgan Riley, the man on the top left shoulder of yours currently yeah uh, that guy that guy is uh he's he's playing some excellent hockey right now i i had no plans to take that jersey out by the way because this is supposed to be one that goes up for sale but you Ooh. know is that signed mm. is that signed on the four it is signed on the four it is signed so you know if anyone's looking for a, a signed riley jersey hit me up <laughs> I mean, but, I th- right, but right now, if I sell it, it might be some bad juju. So, well, it, it, it's staying up there for now. If you sold it now, you might get a little bit more cha ching. He's uh, definitely somebody who people are very happy with now compared to where they were three weeks ago with his play. This is very true. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break, Dave. When we get back, we'll uh, we'll run through our three stars. We'll continue to break down this game and we got game four tonight big game four can toronto go up three one back to toronto or will it be an even series we'll uh, we'll have those predictions for you on the other side but first i do want to tell you about one of today's show sponsors and uh it's our friends over at game time it's the place for last minute ticket deals forget planning months in advance game time has deals on tickets Right up to the day of the event, get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, hockey, whatever you want. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less money. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what you're getting when you arrive. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds, just two taps, and you are set. Download the game time app, create an account. And use Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On These podcast. It's Mike DeStefano and Dave Morissuti. We're hosts here on the show. Maple Leafs with a big time four three overtime victory over the. Tampa Bay Lightning to take a 2-1 series lead. They get home ice back in their hands with that victory. Uh, let's do our three stars of the game, Dave. who uh, Who's your third star? Third star, I'm going to give it to Morgan Riley. You know, I think he, uh, the brain point, I don't know if we were going to discuss the brain point uh, incident. I think oh, that yeah. was uh, a bunch of bull. I'm not going to say the rest of that uh, that line, but I think uh, you know Riley Riley is has upped his game in the playoffs. Um, defensively, he has not been no, he hasn't been perfect. I don't think anyone in the Leafs have been totally perfect, but he's been pretty good. And chipping in on those offensive moments that's that's what's going to help elevate this team, right? When he you know he gets the four assists in game two, he scores a pivotal goal in uh, in game three. These are the things that we need to see Morgan Riley do 
and he's he's stepping up when the pressure's on and you know you have to love what you see from that from him right now yeah 100 percent. like he's a guy who uh who certainly is deserving of uh, of one of those three stars i would say you were gonna mention him so i decided to give a little bit of love to somebody else uh and, and it's austin matthews who i thought was a man on a mission and he said are we gonna talk about that Braden point incident yes we are i was gonna talk about it right here because austin matthews registered a fight we'll say he registered a fight i mean yeah. i'm still not not 100 percent sure if that second glove actually hit the ice but he and steven stamkos did kind of wrestle each other around he took a couple of shots and then showed a little piss and vinegar for the first time in his career and i gotta tell you didn't mind it one bit not one bit i, I, I really enjoyed it I, I know some people are like don't need that guy getting into a fight and breaking his hand well guess what he didn't really throw a punch so he was all good yeah. But it showed that he cared, and it's just I don't know. That guy's a robot most of the time. Doesn't show a whole lot of emotion. There was a lot of emotion and heat in that moment, and when he came out of the box, he did come out shot out like a cannon, and he was good all game. He was great all game, the entire game. Scored a goal, big goal for them, obviously with the tip. But you know, he was definitely like a man who who was pissed off said we're not being pushed around by you jokesters anymore and really started to to push back and that's what this team needs is the big boys to push back it's one thing to have luke shen to have um you know like Jack Ass and reese to have jake mccabe and like those guys really push back but when you can have your stars like the they do over there steven stamkos really push back and really bring that that aggressiveness to the table I mean, that's just – it's its a different ball game. It truly, truly is. And we kind of saw um, Austin Matthews have that in this game. So wanted to give him a, a star, not only for the, the beautiful tip play that he had to, to get on the board for the first time in the series, but also the fact that he, you know, registered a fight and showed a little P&V, which I, I really like to see. Yeah, and, you know, like, you know the Lightning, what they were trying to do in that moment, right? They were trying to – Yeah, so – so what did you make of those comments? So for anyone who who, uh, who didn't hear, after the game, Sheldon Keefe came out and basically said, uh, I don't know, he was going at the refs, but in a roundabout way by congratulating, essentially, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning on how they went about that whole thing to avoid getting penalties and whatnot because, you know, a veteran team knows apparently once there's one penalty called, it's basically a free for all. And at that point, it's just, everybody's going to be taken off. Even though Austin Matthews took like three or four pretty good shots from stamp goes to the face before anything else happened. Yeah. So that probably should have been an extra penalty, but uh, Cooper came out and said, ah, that's, 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 you know, horse bleep. But I don't know. What'd you make of those? Well, uh, yeah, like, Austin Matthews didn't instigate that fight. What does the instigator rule just not apply anymore in the playoffs? Like that that's the one I was just like, okay, there's a power play for the Leafs. We know that. Where's the extra penalty for all the extra stuff that came about? Like they're tied up. The the refs have both guys tied up and then Stamco starts throwing punches. That should have been an extra penalty. I I uh, Sheldon Keefe I think was trying to do that in a way that didn't make the refs as you said, didn't make the refs look bad. And yeah, you had to kind of, you had to like really listen to where he was trying to go with those comments to understand that he wasn't trying to get, he was just trying to avoid the fine himself. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think so. I think he knew exactly what he was doing and he knew that this was a way to get the refs attention without actually going at the refs, but he was fully going, intending on going after the refs. And if he gets fined, he does not care. Money well spent in his opinion, I would assume. I mean, and also, like, the Kucherov play was just so dangerous, too. Like, he literally jumps on Morgan Riley. Yeah. And that, like, that's just a two-minute, like, it, it, it's almost like, yeah, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Leafs take it to one level, and then Tampa's like, okay, so this gives us an excuse to take it to another level. I yeah. think, and, like, look, the, I, I give the Leafs credit for defending themselves. They weren't, you know, crying about it. They weren't complaining about having to defend themselves. They're not doing that, and that's good. But, you know, yeah, I think... We knew exactly how Tampa will act in those moments. There, there are other issues I had with the refs in that game, especially with Patrick Maroon just deciding he's just going to hit people without the puck on a consistent basis and just well, not 
the whistles just completely went away after that too. Like there was there was a lot of questionable oh, things yeah. happening on the ice. Some who was it? Uh, Tanner Janot just like completely, you know, checks Justin Hall from behind and nothing. And it's like man, there's like some blatant interference and holding calls that were not getting called. Like the whistles went away after all that nonsense went down. Um, which I mean, I don't mind. Like that is playoff hockey at the end of the day. It's just when you're letting that stuff go, and then like you think back to some of the other ticky tacky calls that they've had in throughout the series, not only just in game one, but game two. And even earlier in that game, it's like, uh, there's just no standard of, of consistency with this officiating crew. It's, it's really something that's just it's like wild. The lightning are daring the refs to take a penalty, like to, to call a penalty on them. They're just daring. And they're doing those things until the refs finally decide to call a penalty. Like that, all that stuff that they were doing after, after the fight or after the big scrum, they were doing that in game two, and guess what? They were going to the box consistently. Mm-hmm. Game three, none of that. So, I yeah. again, I'm not going to really like, harp on it too much just because the Leafs, it didn't cost the Leafs anything, but if this is the standard going forward, the Leafs are going to have to figure out a way to uh, rise above it again. Yeah, 100%. Uh, all right, your third, uh, second start of the game, Dave. Uh, I got to give it to Ryan O'Reilly. Even just that line of O'Reilly, Achari, and Nyes. They set the tone in the game, and they whenever they were on the ice, I felt at ease because they were just they were the most consistent line from start to finish. There wasn't really a bad moment for that for that trio, and yeah, and Ryan O'Reilly just showing you know it, it was I, I I even tweeted out I said it's nice to see a Leafs trade acquisition coming up in a big moment. I haven't really seen it that much, right? So. That that's that was that's big, and you know, it, it, we were having there was a discussion on the in the Discord chat, just kind of who's been like the Leafs' best player. I I don't think there's any question has been Ryan O'Reilly so far. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been he's been the guy. Um, like game one, he was the best of a bad bunch. I think we could say game yeah. two, he was he was masterful. Obviously, had a really solid game. Although a lot of players had some really good game twos. But uh, he, he's at the very least the the Leafs' most clutch player, and the clutch gene is is one of the most important ones to have come playoff time, and that's that's exactly what that guy has is is that clutch gene. So um, you know, three games in, yeah, that he's come as advertised as uh, the factor, and he's been a big time factor in this series. He was my second star as well. I mean, just the the, the face off draws he was winning, the chances that that line was was getting, you know, he was going out there killing penalties. He was obviously the guy who tied the game, you know, in the in the final minutes. Uh, he was also my second star. My first star, however, uh, obviously Ilya Samsonov, who was just unbelievable in that game, just legitimately. The Leafs were not supposed to win that game. I think the deserve to win meter was like 33% or something like that for the Maple Leafs. And Samsonov stood on his head in the second and third period when – the lightning were really taking it to him, like barrage of pucks going on that guy, wave after wave. And uh, he wasn't allowing anything, man. Like he really wasn't. They allowed, they got a couple of goals in the second, in the first period, scored early in the second. Uh, and then that was really it. He shut it down in that second half of the hockey game. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for Samsung's performance, ain't no way that this team holds a 2 1 lead right now because he was the best player in that uh in in that game by far and the Leafs had to get one game where a goalie stole it I thought to win this series and game three seemed like a pretty good one after you know leaving Toronto with a split now they're up 2-1 and have guaranteed themselves a split in Tampa and they'll go for uh, the 3-1 lead tonight potentially but he was amazing in that game no he was he was pivotal uh it, it's it's no question that the Leafs have been looking for goaltending. I was actually just looking while we were uh, discussing. Fred Granson has had performances like this, I will say. So for anybody that tries to fact check us, I did look. Fred Granson has had some good performances. But what I'm saying is when the what league... performance did Freddie... What game did Fred Anderson steal for Toronto? There was a few against the Bruins where he had like 43 saves. Like, yeah, but did Toronto play poor in those games or did he just have 43 saves? I have to like watch back. It's a little hard to... No, no, I know, I get that, but like yeah. it's saying, like, oh, he had a forty-three state performance. Like, okay, what does that mean? 
Yeah, I have to look and see exactly how that game went. Uh, what I'm just saying is that I think that, you know, the Leafs haven't like we we all know the Samsonov stole that game. There's no jo- there's no questioning that. Um, I just look at the fact that you know, it, it's more so when the series gets to those pivotal clinching moments. I think that's where we're gonna hope to see Samsonov have a performance like this. So it's good to see that he's done it now. Now, when the when the when the pressure is really on this mm-hmm. team to get that final to get that final win that they need, you know, game like game four tonight, like the the Leafs should. Like, there's no reason why the Leafs shouldn't have all the motivation to try to get this game going back to Toronto up 3-1. 100%. 100%. You know what the scoring chances, the discrepancy was between the two teams in overtime? Oh, it was – I every time every time Nikita Kucherov had the puck, I had to hold my breath. It was, I know, legitimately. Like, Samsonov had to make so many – so that one backhander he made, there was another stop. Like, he made a couple of big-time saves in that overtime period to, to – you know, allowed the team to win the game 15 to three in the scoring chance differential in, uh, in the overtime period. And, and isn't it funny how the game was ended in, uh, in, in the final minutes, just given that Toronto and the, and the final minute goals that they've allowed in this series and how those have been pivotal for, for Tampa, for the Leafs to score in the final minute, I thought was also kind of a little, little something, something too. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's that that part too was also it, it was just like everything that went wrong for the Leafs throughout the game or throughout just any time in the playoffs, just those last minute goals, not being able to get the goal, the big goal in overtime, not being able to just weather the storm. It all just kind of it was just the perfect package all in one for the Leafs in that win. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, when we come back, let's talk about uh, Kyle Dubas and what he got up to down in Tampa watching that game and how his team may perform tonight for game number four. So that's what's coming up next here on the Locked On Leafs podcast. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morsuti here with you. Uh, Maple Leafs with uh, with a game four tonight against the Tampa Bay Lightning, a chance to go up 3-1 in the series Go back to Toronto with uh, with a very, very nice series lead. It'll obviously be a very difficult thing. The Tampa Bay Lightning just simply don't lose three games in a row. They they just simply don't do that. Not especially come playoff time. So if they can, that'll be uh that'll be the first time that they've been able to do that. Probably I believe since the Columbus series, um, that they've lost three games in a row. This is the first time, this is the Second time in the last three years that they've lost back-to-back games in a playoff at that. So Toronto's already done something that most teams haven't done. The only team that did it was the Colorado Avalanche in the last three years. Well, they're the only team that's actually beaten them in a beat game series. So pretty good omen for the Maple Leafs uh, to go in there and take two in a row off of the Tampa Bay Lightning. But can they make it three in a row, Dave? That's the question that we now have going into tonight's game. And uh, I would imagine Kyle Dubas will be watching tonight's game from the press box. But do you imagine for him to be uh, up to the same antics that he was up to in game number two? Dave? I, yeah, I, 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 that clip was uh, was interesting. Obviously, we can't totally make out what was. I mean, we did hear a couple of those uh, those words that were shared to the fans that were heckling him. Like, did you hear what the heckles were, by the way? I heard one of them was to say go back to you know the to bleeping Canada. That's the only one I heard. I couldn't really tell make out what the other ones were. I mean, okay. I also was listening on my phone, which is probably the worst worst way you try to listen to one of those. Uh, yeah, you can hear anything on 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 those. But apparently, someone said that uh, somebody was calling Dubas Harry Potter, and that that was a pretty solid chirp. I will say. So yeah. that was one. So there was like some Canada stuff, Harry Potter, and yeah, he got heated, man. Like that's and, and and that's again just kind of the difference between how different things feel this year as opposed to years past. Like the pressure on everyone, the pressure on the core four is kind of what you think you know is is what fuels Austin Matthews to get into that fight potentially. The pressure on Kyle Dubas for him to be fighting with the referees, like or with the with the fans, like. There's just a lot of pressure all over the place, and Sheldon Keefe fighting with the referees uh, on and off the ice uh, 
in a way. So, yeah, there's just so much pressure on this team to succeed this year and finally get over the hump. Um, and they can get one step closer to that with a win tonight, Dave. But what do you think is, has got to be the key for them to pull away with uh, with a 3-1 victory heading back to Toronto tonight? I think you, you take out some of the some of what you did in game three and you take away a lot of what didn't go right in game three, which was get off to a good start, (laughs) right? Get off to a good start. They scored first in game in game three. And that seems to get just ease some of the nerves. That's good. There's going to be some nerves, right? You know, Tampa is going to have a massive pushback going into this one. They know that they played very well against the Leafs in game three, probably deserved a better fate. Leafs just got to show that you know what that that effort is. You're not going to see that effort again from this team. So um, that's going to be, I think, a big one for uh, for the Leafs is just whether whatever storm Tampa is going to throw at you in the first uh, in the first few moments, and then try to get that first goal and just run those four lines consistently like they did. Right, get all four lines going, keep Tampa in their own zone. Uh, the the Leafs got the Leafs were t- trying. They were a little too cute trying to get you know, doing some of the breakouts. They weren't make, keeping things simple. It was it was just like watching this team try to break out of the zone was painful at yeah. times. And yeah. they got they got to do a better job of you know easing the up that pressure that Tampa's going to throw at them. Yeah, and you know they got to they got to tighten up the, in the defensive zone as well. Uh, Twenty one high danger chances they gave up in that game. Um, I mean, not a whole lot of it was like in tight and close. Uh, which I guess is a good thing. Like I'm pretty sure, what was the average um, average shot that Samsonov got? How far out was it from? Uh, average shot distance, yeah, it was 42, 42 feet out. So, you know, like he didn't allow a lot of shots in there, but they allowed a lot of shot attempts. There was what 80, 91 shot attempts that the that the Lightning had. So they were throwing everything on net in that game and uh i just think the maple Leafs, to your point you know need to clean it up a little bit in their defensive uh, in their defensive end and a lot of that is getting the puck out when they get when they get it right like there was a lot of um giveaways in their own end uh, a lot of failed clearing attempts and and you just got to make sure that you do it ring it off the glass off the boards you know get some height on it down the ice like that's just what the the, they got to do i mean tonight or the, what we saw happen on Saturday. They, there was a lot of second, third chance opportunities for, for Tampa Bay because the Leafs just simply weren't able to get the puck out of the zone, and they just kept getting hemmed in for long shifts. They sustained a lot of those shifts, luckily. Uh, Sam Snob had to come up with a couple of big saves. But there was a few times where they had players out there for long periods of time, and Tampa just whipping it around. And, you know, luckily it didn't cost them, but that can't be – you can't hope that that's the the recipe for success again tonight, right? You got your one game that Samsonov needed to steal you. I, th- I think that was game three. I mean, if he can steal you another one, that's fantastic. But now you got to show up for him, right? Prove to him that you're you're happy and you're you're grateful for the performance that he gave you in game number three. And the offense needs to come out in game number four, like like gangbusters. They they really really do. Um, so that's what I think is going to have to be the plan. Uh, obviously just continue to get pucks in deep and, you know, pressure those D like we saw Darren Radish cough up the puck to Austin Matthews when he put pressure on him led to a goal, right? Like these young defensemen inexperienced or, you know, bottom pair guys, they, they can be pressured into making some mistakes. I know Victor Hedman's out there, um, but he's not the same Victor Hedman. He, he looked like he was laboring. He played a lot. Still has a very good stick, still very intelligent, and his, his positioning is good. But he does look a little like a half step slower and does look like he's skating, you know, gingerly out there. So you could probably take advantage of of, uh, of him a little bit at some point in this series as well. So continue to put pressure on the D, but you got to get the pucks in, in deep before you can do that. Uh, so that's pretty much what I think the game plan's got to be tonight. And, of course, to your point, yes, score first. If you score first, changes everything. So I think the first goal is going to be very meaningful here tonight in uh, game four against the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, pal. Good stuff. We will uh, come back tomorrow and recap this game. Hopefully, uh, you know, they have gone up 3-1 by then and we can start to uh, to plan the party. Plan the party. Like, should there be a party if they win round one? Like, you think there will be... Partying in the streets, if they oh, do it around, they will be. Yeah, they will. I, I was like, 
just cut. I know you don't probably don't get to see how they are after a game because you're by the time you're gone from media that like most of the fans disperse after game two. Like it was really lively on the street. Yeah. Right? If you, like if you don't think the like Lee Sands are going to celebrate after winning a round, which I know like people are going to chirp them for, but nah, I wouldn't care. Just celebrate because everyone makes fun of the fact that you haven't won a series. Enjoy it, Lee's Nation. So I do think there will be. If the if the Leafs do pull this off, there's gonna be there's gonna be a celebration of some sort. Well, and get one step closer tonight uh, with a win in Tampa, and then bring it back home potentially with a chance to advance on their own home ice. Uh, all right, that does it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore. Maura Sudi will be back with another episode tomorrow to recap uh, game number four. But until then, keep locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.